Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am, as usual, delighted to greet you in the master's and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm still, I guess, how do you say, recovering a bit from our journey um, to Israel. Again, I'm grateful to all of those of you who prayed for me. I want to thank um, Deacon Long and those who um, helped to keep... Um, the church on track in my absence, and it's just good to be home. It's good to see each and every one of you know that God loves you, and so do I. Um, all right, so I'm waiting for some of you to come on. Um, know that God is good, and he alone is worthy to be praised. All right, um, I'm not going to be long today, but as you know, we went to the Holy Land, and so what I'm attempting to do is share with you out of the Bible, some of the places that we went. And we were um, along the Damascus Road. We um, went to Joppa. Um, we were in Jericho. And so today, I want to continue. Yesterday, some of my notes were a little bit construed. But let me um, go back now to Acts. Um, and I think we're in Acts. Can we put this together for me? We're in Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Let me go ahead and um, and commence with verse, mm, let's commence with verse 19, 19, okay? So we know that Paul was, was um, met the Lord on the Damascus Road. We know that he had been blinded. We know that he met Ananias and he went to Ananias' home. And we know that God was gracious and we, he received his sight. We're in um, Acts chapter 9 now, uh, commencing with verse 19. And it says, and after taking some food, um, the apostle Paul we're talking, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once, this is after spending time, though, in study, um, you know, in Arabia, um, Paul, the Bible says, um, he um, began to preach in the synagogue that Jesus is the Son of God. This was the man who had who had persecuted the Christians for believing in Christ, and now he is preaching the gospel. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, "Isn't all those who heard him were astonished and asked, isn't he who raised havoc in Jerusalem among those?" who called on his name? And has he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. Let me pause here and tell you that I don't care what you've gone through, I don't care what you've done. If God before you is more than all that can be against you and God can and wants to use you as he did the apostle Paul. The Bible says, um, after many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But God will let you know when you spend time with him, he'll let you know where and who the enemy is. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night, they kept watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. Here it is. When he came to Jerusalem, we were in the city of Jerusalem, which is the holy city, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was really a disciple. You know, when God changes you, when God does something in your life, there'll be those who will not believe, but hold on to God because he'll make a way out of no way. The Bible says, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly, um, he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with him and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. All right. This is not Caesarea Philippi. This is another city in, in, in Caesarea, right? Um, that was in this part of the world. 
Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit and increased in numbers. Listen, when the gospel goes forth, God will give the increase. One plant of another water, then God gives the increase. Let's press forward now as we conclude this. And so we went to this place of Caesarea. We also were where the, in, on Damascus where Paul and who was Saul, who was um, converted under Damascus road. I mean, this God that we serve is true. This Bible is true. And I'm happy to report to you that we saw authentic evidences of the Bible live as we walk through the Holy Land in Damascus and in Judea and in Galilee, as we were on the Galilee um, Sea, where the men and the disciples, in fact, fished. And as the word went forth, the Bible says that they enjoyed a time of peace and were strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. As Peter traveled about the country, went to visit people who had lived in Lydda. There he found a man named Ananias who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. Ananias, um, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. Immediately, Ananias got up. All those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. We were also in the city of Joppa. I'm going to close here. And in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. Her name in Greek is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. And about that time, she became sick and died. Her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with, them, went with them and when we arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while he was still with them. But they were mourning because she had died. And I want to tell you people that when you want God to bring life out of a dead situation, you've got to have positive people around. You can have people that are telling you that it can't happen, people that are crying, that are mourning, and they see the glass as half empty, not as half full. They don't really believe that God can do what God can do. But hold on to God's unchanging hands. And sometimes you have to move out all of the negativity, all of the negativity. Here it is in verse 40. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. Uh, when you get rid of the negativity and then when you pray in faith, God will move on your behalf. You need to know that. She opened her eyes at the word of the man of God and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. We were in the city of Joppa, where in the upper room, where Tabitha was raised from the dead, not by Peter, but Peter was the vessel had faith in God to believe that God could do the impossible. And the Bible says that they presented, that she was presented by Peter all of the people who were negative, alive. This became known all over Joppa. Many believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. All right. This is not Simon Peter, because Peter is the disciple who stayed with the tanner in Joppa, and he dealt with leather. We were in these places, and I come back to tell you that the God that we serve is real, that his word is real, that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. Somebody give God praise, honor, and glory. We'll continue tomorrow 
um, as we begin to share with you some of the places that we saw as we were in fact in the Holy Land. I come back to tell you that the God that we serve is real, that the word of God is real, that the flower fadeth and the grass withereth, but the word of God will stand forever. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. All things are possible to those of us who believe in God, because the God that we serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. Well, let me greet some of you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Natalie Crawford, thank you. Flores Farrell, thank you. Ann Hamid. My friend, Brother Jose White, how are you? Sister Thelma Phillips, so good to see you. Angela Kelly, thank you for your words of encouragement, all of your prayers. Know that I am so grateful. Um, Joan, how are you? Sister Phyllis Larry, thank you for putting together the prayer call as people pray for us every hour throughout the day. We are so grateful we're able to feel um, the power of your prayers because God is not limited by geographical locations. He's everywhere at the same time because he's omnipresent. Leroy, how are you? Thank you so much. Angela, how are you? Sister Deborah Dunham, Sister Ruby Ramsey. Um, thank each and every one. In Virginia Chainer, thank you so much. Mary Lawrence, Maxine, thank you, thank you. Um, who is this here? Um, Wendy, I think I saw you. Um, thank you. Um, I did see a name. I don't, I'm so glad that you joined us. I've lost you for a minute, but thank you so much for being here. Um, thank each and every one of you. We're going to go to Lord in prayer. I just want to go back for a minute. Um, Sister um, Shirley Millard, thank you so much. Um, Sister Deborah Dunham, thank you. Thank each and every one of you. God bless you. Let's go to Lord in prayer. And thank you, thank you, and thank you. Let's pray. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks. We thank you that the grass withers and the flower will fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Thank you, O God, for traveling mercies. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Thank you for the privilege of seeing a brand new day. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. All we have needed, your hands have provided. Today, oh God, we pause to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Now, oh God, bless each person in the sound of my voice. You know more what to give us than we know what to ask for. So give us according to our needs. Oh God, where there's sickness, be a doctor, where there's confusion, oh God, be our peace. Where there's lack, oh God, be Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. Oh God, we pray for those that have bereft of spirit as they've lost loved ones. We pray for the family of the Reverend James Bonwell, who life was celebrated on this past Sunday. We pray for my good friend and classmate, Terrence Broxton, who has joined us so many times on this call that you call them from labor to reward. Oh God, we pray that you bless his family. Oh God, we pray for those that whose heart ache. We pray for those that are on the battlefield. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and around the world where there's unrest. And even in this city, oh God, we pray, oh God, that you will give us your peace that passes all understanding. Help us, oh God, to recognize that we are our brother's keeper. Oh God, we pray for this place called Salem, that we will ever be a light in this community, pointing men and women and boys and girls to the one who is the light of the world. May we live out our name, Salem, coming from the word Shalom, that we might know that you are our peace and that we might be a house of peace and a house of prayer. Hear our prayer now, incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Well, God bless you. Happy Tuesday. I look to see you tomorrow. I'm so glad to see so many of you. Please let somebody know that the past is back. Join me here tomorrow as we continue to share with you um, out of our experience to the Holy Land and out of the Holy Script. Know that God loves you and so do I. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so, so very, very much for being here today, and I look to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.